Hello and welcome to The Empowering Word. I'm Pastor Ken Brown. I'm so thankful that you joined me again today. Uh, we're still working through the book of Ephesians, talking about being empowered in Christ. Um, last week we talked about this idea that Paul was saying to live worthy, to live lives worthy of the calling, to, to live, live lives worthy of the calling of Christ to us and that we should be unified in one spirit, in the one who is, who is over all. That we are unified by the Spirit of God, one baptism, one faith, one Lord, one God, in the, in the triune nature of God. But there's something about unity that Paul also wants to emphasize, is that unity in the Spirit, unity in the kingdom, uh, while one still is not necessarily equated to uniformity. Friends, there's a difference between being unified and being uniform. God is not a cookie-cutter God. He is very creative. There is something about the diversity of, of the giftings of God, the, 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 the manifold uh, declarations of God's Spirit through many different forms in many different peoples. It's still the same Spirit. It is still the one Christ, and yet it is being... Uh, manifested through the lives of others. Friends, do you realize that you are a unique manifestation of Christ? That Christ in you is, a, is, is manifested to those around you uniquely because of who you are. The Spirit of God, while, while the Spirit of God does cast out demons and, and casts out all sorts of, of, of foul spirits, God will never cast out your personality. Friends, your personality is who you are, who you've been made to be, who, who, you've, who you've grown in. And God is, is intimately aware of who you are and wants to draw you out to become the greatest you that possibly could be. Friends, that is, is, is not uniformity. That's diversity in unity, in the oneness so we need to, instead of being competitive with one another, we need to embrace and celebrate what God is and who God is in those around us. Friends, I, I love what Lisa Brevere says. She, she declares this, this, this thought of the Spirit. She said, uh, one day God, God spoke to her and said, I don't love my children equally. Man, and it, and it just it, it caught her and it offended her. At first it really offended her. God, I don't understand I don't understand. I know your love. I, I don't understand you saying that you, you don't love your children equally. And he says, I don't love my children equally. I love them uniquely. Friends, we need to embrace this understanding that God loves us uniquely. Friends, if you ask any parent that has more than one, ch one child, they, don't, they, they love their children, but each child has a special relationship with their parent. There's a unique bond, a unique relationship. See, friends, this is what God is doing in the church today. This is what he's doing in his kingdom. So, friends, we need to become everything that God has called us to be in Christ, that we need to reach the full measure of Christ in us to the measure of faith and the measure of grace that he's given us. So that brings me to today's scripture. As we, as we delve back into the book of Ephesians, as we delve back into what Paul was writing, uh, talking about this unity, but also then shifting a little bit and saying it's not about just unity and uniformity. It's about unity and diversity. So let's look at this today. Chapter 4 of Ephesians, starting in verse 7. And Paul says, But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. And so here he's basically declaring to every believer that there is a grace that has been apportioned to each of us. Friends, when you understand that you've been empowered, that, that it, it, now you may not have been empowered like someone else, but don't compare yourself to someone else. You're empowered to do what God has called you to do. Where you are today and what God has, has placed you in, you can actually engage in the works of the Spirit and the kingdom of God right where you're planted. Friends, when we engage in the grace that God has placed on our lives and the empowerment and the authority and the anointing that He has, we can be the best at what it is that God has called us to do. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does this mean? That he ascended, except 
that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Powerful stuff here. Friends, so many of us get lost in the weeds here. We go into all sorts of weird theological wranglings. Listen, Paul is not trying to, to make some theological statement about where Jesus went after he died, if he went to hell or didn't go to hell. It's, listen, we can get into that as a whole separate commentary, but at the end of the day, that's not what he's pulling on. What he's pulling on is the nature of Christ as a risen, uh, victorious king that is ushering those that were captive out of captivity. Friends, that is the, is the vision and the message that Paul's trying to get at here. And it then results in the context of one, of one of my favorite scriptures, but also one of the key cornerstones to how the church is alive and active on the earth today. This is where we get into to, to Ephesians 4.11. And this is where we talk about the fivefold giftings of the Holy Spirit. They're, they're, these are the five office gifts. We talk about all the manifold gifts of the Spirit, uh, the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, uh, interpretation, the gift of giving. But then when we talk about the office gifts, we're talking about five main uh, roles. And, and these, are, these are noted here that these are gifts given to the church by Jesus himself. Let's read Ephesians 4.11. It says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. This is one of those times where Paul pulls on, once again, one of his other great metaphors. We've talked about one of his greatest metaphors being in Christ. Now we want to talk about this idea of being in Christ, but also now his metaphor about the body, the body of Christ. Friends, if you're a believer, you're in the body of Christ. You were called to one faith in one body. Now, everything about this body that God is interested in, that Christ is interested in, is to bring the body of Christ to the full measure of Christ, to the full maturity in Christ. Literally what this means is, is that the body of Christ at, at its fullest maturity should be acting and living in the world as though Jesus himself was walking in the world. When we look at the Gospels and we see what Jesus did, who he was, what he said, how he lived, how he ministered, what, what he delivered people from, all of these things should be activated in full maturity in the life of the believer. Now, how is it that Jesus intends to accomplish this? He uses what are called the fivefold ministries, the, the fivefold giftings. Friends, there are some of you that, that have a gifting for, for, for all sorts of different things, but, but you, may, you may be called into one of these offices, but, but not all are called into these things. Now, I, I just want to kind of break down some, 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 maybe some misinformation and maybe kind of bring some truth to the fact of this. See, one of the things that I recognize in my own life is, is the calling of God into, these, into, into this style of ministry. I am called to an office gift. Now, what that doesn't mean is that I'm now at the top of the pyramid, if you will. I'm not at the top of the food chain. I'm not at the top looking down, managing over. The, the kingdom is an inverse kingdom. It's an upside-down kingdom. What it really meant is, is that when I was called to this gift... See, I'm not called to a gift. I become a gift. Friends, you need to understand that Jesus gave these gifts to the church for the building up of the church unto the maturity of the fullness of Christ. That means that the fivefold ministry, the, the apostles, the prophets, the, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the, these gifts are meant to undergird the church. We're meant to serve the church. We're meant to build up, which means we get to the lowest point. As a matter of fact, I was very happy being in, in, in what you might call marketplace ministry. I was out in the marketplace. I was doing a secular job with a kingdom purpose. I loved it because, because for me, I was able to actually touch people that would never walk or darken the door of any church. 
And I, I had a wonderful ministry. I feel like when God called me into, a, into an office gift, that really what he did was he pulled me out of ministry. I got pulled out of ministry to, to what? To help others engage ministry. See, this is the work of the kingdom. It's called multiplic multiplicity. It's a multiplying. See, God was not just satisfied in having the one do, do all, of, all of these things in the marketplace. What he wanted to do was establish what God had established in me and begin to multiply it in others. So friends, that is that we undergird. Now I want to give you another illustration of the fivefold giftings. And these are, this is something that, that, that uh, I, I watched Bob Jones teach about many years ago. And, and I think it might help you in understanding how the fivefold giftings work. See, because the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me many years ago, that the fivefold giftings are meant to dovetail together. They're meant to intertwine and interlock together as a ministry in the church. They're meant to be manifested in the local church, in every local church. And they're meant to be manifested and, and, and dovetailed together in ministry as a whole. Now, let me explain. I, I, the, 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 your hand is a good representation of the fivefold giftings. And, and the thumb represents the apostolic. It, it, it speaks of the authority and the government of God. Uh, and, and, it, and, 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 the, and the apostolic can actually touch any one of these other digits. You understand? The, the index finger is the prophetic. It's the thing that points out. It's the thing that, that reaches out and points. The, the middle finger is the longest finger. It's, it, this is what, I, what we call like the evangelism. The evangelist, right? These are office gifts, right? And then you have the pastor. This is, this is like the most gentle of fingers. It, 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 it can reach, it can touch, it can minister. Um, and then you have, then you have the teacher here, here in the pinky. So uh, one of the things that you'll notice with the office gifts is that each of the gifts that are connected closely together can operate very easily together. So, so the pastor and teacher almost can become synonymous. They, they work very almost like they, they're just connected hand in hand. And so sometimes you'll see someone that, that has a pastoral gifting. And even in this, even in the in the scriptures, the word pastor, teacher, elder, it almost kind of is, is synonymous, but there is kind of this connection. Then you have the evangelist in the middle. The evangelist can work very well with the pastor and can and can intertwine back and forth. The same is true of the prophet and the evangelist. Uh, now I, I just want to I just want to tout on my friends a little bit. I've, I've witnessed the prophet and the evangelist work hand in hand, dovetailed together. Uh, when, I, when I've seen my friends uh, uh, David Hernandez and, and Rob Sanchez work together uh, in a tag team environment when they minister in the, in the, in the expression of God's glory. And, and I've watched as the, as the evangelist pulls on the prophetic gift of the, of the prophet and the, and the word of the prophet will break Something in someone's life, it'll, it'll break a stronghold that the enemy has, and the evangelist will be able to move freely and, and, and work in healing and all sorts of different things. So I've seen this at work, and it's, and it's a powerful thing to, to witness. And, it, and it, again, it just kind of talks about this idea of the dovetailing. Now, I've seen the apostolic too. Now, here's, here's the thing too. is that the, apost the apostolic or the apostle, really it just means the sent one. And there are many that are sent out that, that are called to these things. And many times the apostle will, will interact with any, any one of these gifts at any given time. They can move between the teacher or the pastor. God will call the apostle many times to a location, to a region, to, to bring order to the body, to, to bring alignment to things. But also sometimes he'll set about a new pioneering work. And in that sense, that, that apostle, that one that is sent, will have to perform the duties of all four. And so you'll see this in the church. And I just, I just want to kind of bring this as a teaching just as a, as a way to kind of provide a framework for how these ministries are to be effectively used in the church, that they're meant to be a part of the church today. This is not something that was just uh, 2,000 years ago. These office gifts are still being given to the church today, and we need to respect that, and we need to walk in that. But again, the, the, to, to those that are in the fivefold, I just want to encourage you that your purpose is not just to be a five-fold gift, but it's really to raise the body up to the full measure of Christ. This is what Paul says. 
when this happens, when, when the fivefold is moving, when, there's a, when the dovetail of this is actually happening in the church, when the church is alive and it's being, when it's being brought into the order of, of, these, of these giftings, verse 14, he says, Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Friends, the energeia, the energies of God, the energies of the Spirit, the work and the power, the, the energies of the dunamis power of God is at work in His church. There is glory in His church. Friends, we are the manifestation of the Christ. And when we work, not, not only in unity, but in, but in a celebration of, the, of the, the diversity of gifts that are given, the diversity of the, of the callings that are there. Friends, when we work hand in glove, when we dovetail together, when we unite together, understanding the sinews and the ligaments and the things that bind us all, we then grow and show the full maturity of Christ. We show the image and the likeness of Christ in the world. Friends, I, I just want to encourage you today that, that, that when we walk in the giftings that Jesus, and we respect the giftings that God has given to the church, when we walk in alignment with the Spirit of God, friends, nothing is impossible. We will grow to the fullness of Christ. Friends, that's an empowering word today, and I want to remind you to live empowered by the Word. I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and join me weekly as we delve into the Scriptures to learn more about the person and work of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching, and once again, I remind you to live empowered by the Word.